So you bought a cheap pool from Amazon or Walmart or Costco, wherever, and you quickly realized you needed things, like ways to store all of the stuff you buy to use in the pool. You may have also come to realize that as the weather increases, your filtering system becomes obsolete. This is an entire video series on how to maximize your cheap above ground pool. Make it awesome. Do things that put this cheap pool on par with other pools that cost six to 10 times as much. We show you how to do it from small to advanced, but right now we're gonna go ahead and rewind it and show you some simple projects. This is our pool at the very beginning and we had two major problems with it. Somewhere to store drinks in our phones and anything like a little bar and also storage for all the stuff. All the stuff you have to buy to maintain the pool and clean the pool. These are very simple mods that I did with scrap wood in the back of my yard and some hardware I already had on hand. Simple tools and they will increase your quality out there on your pool exponentially. Check it out. Alright, so we got the pool here. Make a pool closet that actually holds all our stuff here because it's super annoying to not have any sort of like pool closet. This is our current pool closet. It's pathetic. And we're gonna make a little side table that can hold drinks and phones and stuff and possibly hold the umbrella. This is our current umbrella holder, which is uh this thing needs help. A, a bunch of little short shorthand bootleg mods to get it going, but now we gotta really do some things. So we have had this old palette I've contemplated getting rid of it for so long, but it's actually gonna prove to be useful. We're just gonna do some basic stuff here. Add some cup holders. The projects normally evolve as they go. So we lucked out. This pallet is the exact same height that the pool is. Like you can't, you can't make this stuff up. And I picked a piece of scrap plywood that I had lying around in my backyard from another project. And I traced the inside of, you know, the hexagonal shape. And I cut that out there with, with this simple circular saw. And that's gonna give us the platform where it's gonna stick right there directly on. And then I bought these cheap cup holders from the fixing, like the outdoor section in Walmart. They were super cheap, yeah, a few bucks a piece. We're gonna go ahead and add three of them. So I trace the outside and because it's such a tight fit, I trace the inside with about the exact clearance that the lips on those cup holders are because that, that's how small the margin is for them to fit or they're just not gonna fit. I just happen to have the exact size hole saw from this little cheap kit I have from Harbor Freight. It's much better with the hole saw to go on top just halfway and then finish it out from underneath that way you don't uh, splinter up the wood. You have a high chance of splintering up the wood if you just go from one side all the way through. Now we're just gonna test fit these. And now that we know they all fit, we're gonna take them back out. We're gonna go and just install this thing right on top of the pool where we aligned it with some simple screws right into the studs of that pallet. And we are using this polycrylic from Minwax. It's just, it's really cheap, fast drying, uh, fairly robust stuff. You know, this thing's gonna be constantly exposed to water and the pool's gonna be splashing on it. And so uh, we had pretty good uh, success with this stuff and it's fairly cheap. You can get this at the, like the hardware store. This is some super basic, I need, a, I need a stand now mods. You can go as simple or advanced as you want on this, but I really need this whole thing done in a day. We still have to do the pool closet, which is a little bit more complicated than this. But once this was done, it's done. All right, I gave up on the pool closet that night. I came back the next day, which was a bad decision because it's like 120 degrees outside. Plus it's windy. 120 degree heat blowing in your face all day. I don't know how long I'm gonna last. So we're gonna do this pretty quick. For starters, we took a 3 8 inch thick 4x8 sheet of plywood, cut it directly in half to 2x8 foot strips. These will be the side walls. We are then going to take 2x4 studs and we're going to go ahead and screw them in on each side. We're gonna make these like rectangular, already boxed in pieces. These will be the brunt of the frame strength. And after we have these two done, everything else just kind of falls in place and we can just be free to do what we want. We are pre-drilling holes just for precaution so we don't split the wood because we'll be adding a series of screws all the way down each side. We also box off the ends. And this is what really helps us capitalize on the strength of the whole thing.
I go ahead and I tie it up and I do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have a running version, we line the walls up and the second sheet of 3 8 inch plywood goes directly on the back. And once we have that aligned, we do the exact same thing and set a series of little short countersink screws down the spine. We also install 2x4 studs on the top and bottom of this plywood sheet and that gives us area to mount the top and bottom plywood panels. I had a 3 4 sheet of plywood laying around and that's what I used for the bottom panel on the other side. But everything else is 3 8 plywood attached to these 2x4 studs. And that actually is very strong. You don't need any other type of framing supports inside. Just the plywood bonded to the 2x4 studs in this fashion give it a very rigid and inflexible frame that is low maintenance. Look at what I did here. We seamed it up to pretty much it looks like a boxed up thing. I mean this is how we just make a 3D structure out of simple screws and some wood studs and some cheap plywood. We're going to go ahead and like like whitewash or stain the rest of this. This is the stuff we used. I've been using I really like this stuff. It's a protective polycrylic finish min wax. It dries very quickly. It's crystal clear finish. It's uh, semi-gloss and it's pretty easy to clean up if it's if it's messy. Very, very low toxicity, no odor, no fumes, and it does a pretty good job. We're going to let, make sure this bottom dries and is not tacky before we move on. We're going to go ahead and flip it up, get rid of this bootleg little bench we have here that's completely for something else and not for what it's being used for, and then we'll start to maybe look at how we're going to kit out the inside. big now i really thought this thing was gonna clear this you know it might still no nope no it's not it may nope no it's not now i gotta cut it so that was embarrassing and it just makes you stay out this heat a little longer but whatever it was pretty simple i just trimmed it out and replaced the boards and stuck it back in there fits like a glove now comes the fun part. Now we get to kit out the inside. It's going to be fairly basic. It just needs to solve a few problems. One, we need a little space where my wife can stick her little sound speaker bar on and play music. So that's what this 2x4 is, and that's really all it does. And that was pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and keep the left side open for like long pulls, like the net, the net pulling, and the little bootleg vacuum thing that came with the pull setup. Now all we really need is shelves to store all the goggles, the snorkels, the little blow up thingies and that stupid chlorine tablet bucket, like all those things, just the annoying things that you need out of the way. And then we'll leave the bottom section open for like say a trash can or a cooler, the vacuum pipes. We set out to accomplish this by floating a stud from the top and screwing it in directly to the bottom, making an equally level piece of 2x4 right there and then above where we want the second shelf using a simple level to make sure we're even on both sides and across. Now that that's done we're going to take the last remaining sheets of plywood that we used and cut off from the other ends and we're just going to go ahead and fit them in here. I'll just down the scraps I don't know if I can pull this off. I tried to complete this with all the scrap wood I had in my backyard from another project where I had leftover stuff. So I'm really on the verge of making this cost me literally nothing. Excited about that. But we are slightly short on some things. It's going to do what I need it to do. I'm literally out of scrap wood and I am not going to buy more like scrap wood for this project. As I have like leftover scrap wood, I'll complete other parts of it. You could really use like a bottom like stud joiner here to, to even out this from sinking in. It's just warped. And same thing for here, just for like leverage. But this is where like the goggles and maybe like the chlorine tabs and all that other crap can just go up in here and stay here. One of the last things we really did was give this thing an option for power. And that was just running a simple wall mount we got from the Dollar General, getting a few little wire ties there to keep it all in some sort of uniformity. And because this was so far away from any outlet, we had to drill a hole and run like this. This is a now mod. We'll make it more sophisticated later. But for now, here we are. 
All right, so here this is. This holds everything that I need to hold. I mean, just add add mods, add hangers as you need. We have hangers there for the hoses. We have hangers here for towels. It holds all our chemicals that are able to be stored out here. Some obviously need to be stored in a temperature safe area, but the stuff that can be stored out here, we do. Goggles, filters when we did need it before we got a sand filter. Area down there for a cooler. This is the only thing I haven't really caught up yet, and that's just to run power, but really what we're gonna do is replace that with like a four outlet plug adapter that you would stick into an outlet in the house and we're just going to install that into the wall and then run extension cord from that for stuff to it so i'll be adding actual doors to this this thing gets beat up in the sun constantly that uh polycrylic stuff is pretty legit i mean the water splashes on this it gets beat up in the sun it's still legit the finish is still there it's not evaporated over time and as we get scrap wood we'll fill in this ugliness here too and do something cool with that but and we'll probably eventually add a frame here, if not just redo this entire top piece. This top piece is kind of wrecked now. So we'll figure out what to do there. Um, we might even EVA foam that. We'll, you might have to stay tuned to that. My uh, pool here is about the best it's ever looked. Next video in our series is going to be all about this sand filter. Just the install video on it into one of these pools, because these pools don't come really equipped with it, but you can drop one of these right in there. You can get one of these Intex sand filters, which are substantially better. Look at the, Look at the amount of pressure we have going out and the amount of circulation and everything, this pool has never looked better for as long ever. I mean, this is in the peak of the summer where it's super hard to keep this pool clean out here where it's so hot and it just everything just wants to grow in it. Um, we're gonna do a few more things with this, probably have an in-depth review on this Intex sand filter. That'll be part of our series here, part of our, our above ground pool mods playlist. Check this in the description area below and up here in the iCards as well. If you wanna see that, check out our channel, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thank you.